Okay, in this video I'm going to take another look at how to create machined type of bevels inside of ZBrush 4. And for this I'm primarily going to be using the new shadow box feature. Um, I'm going to begin by just drawing out uh, just a, a sort of weird organic shape. So I'll go into the masking brush. I'm going to use mask pen at this point. And I'm just going to draw out some sort of strange organic looking shape. Just something that might be, uh, I don't know, some sort of gear machined part. I'll go ahead and turn on transparency and then rotate that a little bit to update it and again we'll pull this out maybe just draw out some strange little limbs or arms and then maybe into this sort of odd organic shape that we've got going on here we'll go ahead and add a few holes so hold down the control and alt and we'll just drag out a hole here and maybe there's a hole over here and maybe one over there okay and maybe one also up there all right so we've got this sort of interesting shape going on We'll go ahead and exit out of Shadowbox, and that gives us our nice shape. Now you'll notice right off the bat that we already have a little bit of a bevel going on here, but it's actually a little bit sh uh, soft, not very sharp. So I'm going to go through this uh, process. I'm going to show you uh, sort of a way that will work, and then also a way that won't work. I'm going to show you the way that won't work first, so that uh, you can kind of understand the process that, that we're going into. A lot of this is going to have to do with masking and then inflate, which is a technique that's been around for a little bit of uh, a little while, but it now becomes uh, easier to work with now that we have the clipping brushes. So bear with me. All right, now I'm going to rotate this to the side a little bit, and I'm simply going to choose my masking. And instead of mask pen, I'm going to use mask rectangle. And I'm going to drag this up and grab the front half of this plane. Okay. Now, I want to check here for any errant sort of masking, any little ticks that might be coming off of that that might not be uniform. So you want to check that and everything is looking good in this shape. All right. Go ahead and rotate to that to the front. We'll invert the mask and now what we'll do is we'll take the deformation inflate tool and as we begin to inflate this You'll notice that pulls it into the geometry, and we get this nice sort of clean edge all around. Now, if I activate the Move tool and pull this straight out and then begin to move this out, you'll notice that we get this nice, clean bevel. And by and large, this will look as if it's worked. So let's go ahead and clear the mask out. We do get this little pillow effect up on the upper front area. Okay, but we have this beautiful clean bevel. So let's go ahead and use the new clipping brushes. We'll switch over to uh, Clip Curve. That's Control Shift, and then we choose Clip Curve. We'll go ahead and pull straight down, holding the Shift key at the same time, and then we'll use the space bar to move this, maneuver this right into position, and we'll let go. Now that trimmed it off, but one of the things you're going to notice is we now get this horrible sort of blocky. Uh, sort of cut all around. So we got this nice clean bevel on the outside, but this is just not acceptable. All right. So this is where the technique uh, that I'm going to show you sort of comes into play. I'm going to show you how to overcome this sort of effect using the same basic technique. All right. Let's go ahead and undo this until we get back to this basic shape. So this is what we got right from the shadow box. All right. The first thing I'm going to do is activate the Move tool, and I'm going to stretch this open just a little bit so we have a little more uh, width or depth in here to work with. I'll go ahead and go back to Draw Mode. That's Q. Control Shift to activate my uh, clipping brushes. I'm going to choose the Clip Rectangle, and I'm going to clip out the little bevel that's already here. Now, I could do this with the Clip Curve and do one side and then another, but if I choose Clip Rectangle and just clip and drag, I can clip everything inside and do it all at once. All right. Now, you'll also notice that because the shadow box is not necessarily the most precise of all tools, the holes that we carved here uh, are not perfectly circular. So what we'll do is we'll go into the circular clipping brush, Control shift we'll click and choose Clip Circle Center. I'll go ahead and Control shift click and drag to bring out a circle. I can use the space bar to reposition that. And then hold down the Alt key, that's going to clip and form that into a perfect circle. And I'll just go ahead and do that for all of these. All right. So now I've got this sort of nice, weird kind of gear thing that might appear in some sort of, I don't know, alien spacecraft or something along those lines. 
Now I'm going to do something that seems completely counterintuitive. Now I could mask off the area again and try the process, but you'll have to trust me when I say that that's not necessarily going to work out. So we're going to do something that seems a little counterintuitive. We're actually going to go now and choose the Relax option in the Deformation panel. I'm going to drag that all the way to 100 and let go. It's going to soften everything out. Now I'll go ahead and go to the side again. Into masking with Clip Rectangle, I'm going to clip and drag all the way up. And again, I want to check for any sort of ticks or errant masking on this all the way around as that can be problematic. Alright, we'll rotate to the side. Once again, I'll invert the mask. That's control. Uh, click. We'll go into inflate and this time we'll pull it in. Again, we're going to get that nice clean bevel. And in this case, I'll go ahead and go to the side, back into move mode, and I'll click and drag to pull this right out. Now, back into draw mode, I'll clear the mask. You'll notice we have that nice clean bevel, but we still have that little soft edge. Now in our clipping brushes, back to clip, curve. If we click with the shift key down to keep that constrained, we'll move that back in and let go. And you'll notice we now have a nice, beautiful, clean bevel all the way around. Now in a case like this, we can use the masking tools to once again come in, mask part of this, into the move tool, we can offset this and that'll create a nice straight edge all the way across. We can go into the draw mode again, clear the mask, and with the clipping brush, click and drag straight up. We can trim this so the back end goes away. Now if we wanted this to be a mirrored shape right across, at this point all we would need to do is come back into our geometry menu. I'll activate the floor so I can see where things are lining up. You'll notice this is oriented down the z-axis. We'll go into move mode and we'll begin to pull this back just across the z-axis slightly. You'll notice the blue line. It's now crossing just slightly over the origin. We'll go back into the geometry menu and using the mirror and weld option we'll turn off X and turn on Z so it crosses one side to the other. We'll choose mirror and weld. This gives us a nice beautiful machined looking hard surface bevels on our object and this is a terrific way to do uh, sort of a global bevel all at once for the parts that you get out of um, Shadowbox.